the economy, especially of the southern states, could not conceivably be what it has become if they had not had and do not still have indeed and for so long, so many generations, cheap labor. I am stating very seriously, and this is not an overstatement, that I picked the cotton and I carried it to market. I built the railroads under someone else's whip for nothing, for nothing. The southern oligarchy, which has until today so much power in Washington and therefore some power in the world, was created by my labor and my sweat and the violation of my women and the murder of my children. This, in the land of the free and the home of the brave. And no one can challenge that statement. It is a matter of historical record. But what is happening in the poor woman, the poor man's mind, is this. They have been raised to believe, and by now they helplessly believe, that no matter how terrible their lives may be, and their lives have been quite terrible, and no matter how far they fall, no matter what disaster overtakes them, they have one enormous knowledge and consolation, which is like a heavenly revelation. At least they are not black. One of the great things that the white world does not know, but I think I do know, is that black people are just like everybody else. One has used the myth of Negro and the myth of color to pretend and to assume that you are dealing essentially with something exotic, bizarre, and practically according to human laws unknown. Alas, it is not true. We are also mercenaries, dictators, murderers, liars. We are human too. What is crucial here? Unless we can manage to establish some kind of dialogue between those people whom I pretend have paid for the American dream and those other people who have not achieved it, we will be in terrible trouble. It is a terrible thing for an entire people to surrender to the notion that one ninth of its population is beneath them. And until that moment, until the moment comes, when we, the Americans, we, the American people, are able to accept the fact that I have to accept, for example, that my ancestors are both white and black. That on that continent we are trying to forge a new identity for which we need each other. And that I am not a ward of America. I am not an object of missionary charity. I am one of the people who built the country. Until this moment, there is scarcely any hope for the American dream. Because the people who are denied participation in it by their very presence, will wreck it. And if that happens, it's a very grave moment for the West. Thank you.